There are approximately 450 million people in the world who come from a country where French is the official language. In addition, 98 million people come from a country where French is commonly used. Basically, French is one of the most widespread languages in the world, and while it's still highly associated with France, the country of origin, most French speakers live in other countries. Africa is home to the largest French-speaking population in the world. Although it's predominantly a second language for most speakers, there are some regions such as the commercial capital of Abidjan in Ivory Coast where it is reported to have superseded most local languages. In fact, French influence here is so strong, the country once made a special case to other countries to stop translating the name Côte d'Ivoire to their own languages so that the country can always be referred to with its French name. I was shocked to read from some sources that it is illegal to call the Ivory Coast the Ivory Coast in the Ivory Coast. It must be called Côte d'Ivoire. This could be due to France's colonial policy of assimilation. This essentially meant that the French government promoted the concept of cultural assimilation to colonial subjects in the French colonial empire, claiming that by adopting French culture, they would ostensibly be granted the full rights enjoyed by French citizens and be legally considered French. A total of 31 independent states worldwide use French as an official language. If territories are included, the total number increases to 42. To put Africa's French-speaking spread into perspective, of this total, 21 states are located in Africa, which represents half of the world's French-speaking states and territories. However, there are several other countries which have large French-speaking populations, but French is not an official language. These are Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, Mauritania, Mauritius, Morocco, and Tunisia. I know this isn't how the complexities of geopolitics work, but what would happen if all the French-speaking countries of Africa suddenly united and decided to fuse into a new massive unpartitioned country that for purposes of this video we would call simply West Africa Republic? In this video, we'll find out what this country would actually look like in the modern geopolitical structure and how its people would compare with those in the rest of the world. To begin with, this is how the map of Africa would change with the borders of the new West Africa Republic. The country would spread its tentacles from Dakar all the way to the northernmost point of Africa in Tunisia, extending down through Cameroon and coming to an end in the Democratic Republic of Congo. A total of 25 countries would lose all their territory to the new country, including the world's fourth largest island, Madagascar, and some small island nations in the Indian Ocean, making the hypothetical West Africa Republic span over a gargantuan area of 11.6 million square kilometers in land size, definitively making it the second largest country on the planet only behind Russia. The new country would be home to a population of 300 million citizens, which is 3.5% of the world population. Indonesia, Pakistan, Brazil and Nigeria would be outstripped from their population rankings. While this is impressive, West Africa Republic would only be the fourth most populous nation on Earth, just behind the United States, but far behind India and China, which have much larger numbers of people. Staying on population, while the Democratic Republic of Congo alone makes up 17% of the total world's French-speaking population, it has the largest population of any country, with French as the official language. Even France pales in comparison, as it doesn't have as many French speakers as this former Belgian colony. 
Therefore, it would be the absolute epicenter of the West African Republic as three out of every ten people of the country's citizens would live in the DRC. The city of Kinshasa would be by far the largest city in this new country with a population of 17 million people followed by Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire, Yaoundé in Cameroon, Dakar in Senegal, and Antananarivo in Madagascar to wrap up the top five largest cities. Due to the massive geographic spread of the country, it would make the most sense to bestow the privilege of the proposed capital city to be split between Rabat as the capital and Abidjan as the financial capital. With regards to the actual people in this hypothetical country, the ethnic spread of the population would be dizzyingly diverse. 52% would be from the world's largest language family in terms of the number of distinct languages called the Niger-Congo language family. 30% would be from the Afroasiatic language family and the remaining 18% would be from the Nilo-Saharan language family. The country would have an almost 50-50 split of the major faiths on the continent. 40% of people would be affiliated to Islam and would live mostly in the north of the country. 39% would profess the Christian faith and would live mostly in the south. 15% would ascribe to traditional African beliefs, mostly voodoo, while the remaining 6% would be atheists. In matters economy, the West Africa Republic would need to adopt a new single currency. Obviously, the CFA franc and the ECO, the currencies used by West and Central African countries, would have to be left behind. Despite their independence in the 1960s and 70s, many Francophone African countries chose to preserve close ties to France and preserved the usage of a common currency. The justification being the stability offered by the currency and a close relationship with France. The new eco currency has been touted as a replacement but still has some controversial aspects similar to the CFA franc. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a longer analysis video about this currency. A new single currency in this country would facilitate trade, lower transaction costs, facilitate payments, integrate the region, and most importantly, it will not be pegged on the euro. In the past, African countries paid up to 65% of their foreign exchange reserves into the French treasury. Besides this, the country would be full of promise and untapped riches, from oil to timber, abundant high-value minerals and land to vast amounts of human capital. It would have a combined economy with a gross domestic product of $702 billion, taking it past Nigeria to become the largest economy in Africa. In a global perspective, this would only be enough to beat Belgium, Sweden, Taiwan and Poland, but it would still be dwarfed by Switzerland, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. The GDP per capita would only be $2,240, placing the West African Republic in the middle income economy bracket with living standards of its citizens ranked just below those in Ghana, Nigeria and the Solomon Islands, but slightly better than the living standards in India and Mauritania. The most common language would obviously be French, 90% of the population would be able to speak or understand it, followed by a cocktail of other languages which will have overlapping numbers, meaning some people would be able to understand more than one or two languages. Arabic would be understood by 40% of the population, English understood by 15%, Swahili at 10.5%, Portuguese at 3% and Spanish by 1.5%. Finally, West Africa Republic would have a military size of about 800,000 active soldiers and 230,000 reserve personnel. 
With an annual budget of about $10.5 billion, Algeria would be the absolute Jupiter of this country as it would contribute by far the largest dollar amount to the combined military budget of $14 billion. Do you think this country would survive in the 21st century? How would it shake up the geopolitics of Africa and the rest of the world? I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments section below. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this, hit the like button and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.